Welcome back to Sturge Tropia. This is Sturge with episode 23 of Profitable Mining in the Entropia Universe. I do realize it's been a couple of weeks since I put a video out here, uh, specifically for the uh, the mining series. That is due to the fact that I have been working full time, almost completely full time, in the last uh, 10 to 12 days. So. That has changed the drop schedule for videos. I think it'll probably be Monday or Tuesday as we go forward because that's those are my days off. And so just be mindful of that, that uh, things change a little bit. And uh, I didn't forget you. I didn't forget to uh, continue to work on the uh, the content for these mining videos as well and record things. In fact, I've done quite a bit of work lately and... In doing that work and doing some calculations, I realized that the initial equation that I had for how to generate a mining claim is wrong. Only very slightly wrong. We're just going to rearrange it a little bit. And I want to talk about that and how, how it is that I realized that I had it mixed up. And that effect, again, like I said, will be very minimal at best. Let's take a look at the previous claim value equation. It was probes of uh, universal MOTT value plus finder decay times a multiplier. That is incorrect, and probably the simplest answer is there's no way Mindark is going to give you a multiplier on your finder decay. At best, they're going to give you a percentage of your finder decay, or none at all. And that should make good sense if you put it in terms of, let's say, a mob attacks you, damages your armor, and then you turret that mob, you get a small percentage of your armor decay back as a in shrapnel right so it but it's it's only 10 to 15 percent and so maybe that carries over to um, mining as well i don't know that number but i guarantee you mind arc on really large mining claims is not going to multiply your finder decay times a thousand and give it to you it makes more sense to give you a percentage after the calculation is done on the TT value of your drop, meaning or end matter treasure. And if you're using an amplifier, that the decay of that amplifier, and that decay really is just, just TT value on the amplifier. And then after that, there is a chance of adding in the decay of the finder. I don't know what that is. It does appear to be somewhat random based on the spreadsheets that I put together. But what I'm doing right now is specific mining runs in a very specific location with a good hit rate so that I can show you the data that I use to actually suss that out. As I stated previously, the claim value equation was subject to change, which we can now do since we have a little bit more information. It is probes universal ammo TT value times a multiplier. What that multiplier is, I don't know. I'm using a whole number as it stands, one, two, three, four, five, whatever, uh, just for the purpose of trying to figure out you know, what it, what it actually is, and then adding in the finder decay times a per small percentage, which is seen in other examples in, uh, in hunting and also in like armor decay. So this is starting to look a little bit more accurate, and I want to apply that to the data from this particular mining run. So let's take a look here at my spreadsheet. Handy dandy. The claim value equation at the top. That's the new claim value equation. The way we were doing it prior, though, was actually just saying what's the OR plus, uh, which is one ped drop, and the plus the finder decay, which is 1.0372 PED. Uh, and then I just want to look at this first Listerium claim to as an example. If we were to use the multiplier of three, and the word in print, the uh, pre in uh, parentheses means predicted, then we would get a value uh, from the 1.0372 times three would be 3.1116 PED. But the claim value is actually 3.06 PED. So that's not correct. The difference is 5.16 peck. So it's clear right there from that first drop of the mining run that's sort of in the background of this video that the, the original formula is incorrect. Mind you, I've gone through this 
uh, many different ways and tried to calculate what that percentage might be, uh, multiplied uh, the finder decay percentage, and still am not able to get anything consistent that shows me uh, what multiplier, you know, finder decay multiplier is going to give me the value of 3.06. And it's going to be different every time. So let's take a look at another example here, though. Here's the value right hit. And if we were to multiply, it's got a predicted multiplier of 6. Multiply 1.0372, which is our base or plus finder decay, and we'd get 6.223. 2232 PED, but we only got six pet out of this one, right? Now, that's a nice claim. It's a bigger than normal claim, and but we still have a loss of 22.32 uh, uh, PED, or sorry, PEC, 22.32 PEC. So what is going on here? Is it a rounding event down? So the claim size was larger, uh, the claim, sorry, the claim value was larger, or which is probably not very likely because it would have been considerably larger, meaning multiple pack larger and then rounded down to six doesn't make sense. More likely, it was below six. It was a multiplier of five and then rounded up into the six category, which makes me wonder how, how does the uh, event of a claim generate? And what I think ha has to happen, the tree of events, first of all, you have to have a hit. Here's the value right hit. You have to have a hit. And the next thing would be to determine the claim value. That's, and then we just insert our claim value equation into that. And then the next step would be, what was the depth of that particular hit? And from that depth, the resource can then be determined because resource is dependent on depth. In this particular area, there are only nine possible uh, ores that I can hit. And value right happens to be the lowest percentage of all of those resources in this particular area. So we and we know that value right has an average depth of 892 meters, or it's right it's right around there, 850 meters we could call it, and that one was at 855 meters. So that makes good sense. And then that was a larger than normal claim because it was a, uh, a value of six PED. So that's that's my thinking there. It's hit. Uh, do you get a hit? What is the value of that hit? And then the next step is what is the depth? And the depth determines the resource. And then the final factor is can you actually hit that resource at that value? And in the instance where that particular resource, the value of that particular resource is not divisible into the claim value, then the resource you will obtain will be something like Listerium, where it is divisible into that particular claim value. And that's, I, we do happen to see in this particular instance that the uh, six ped value right stone fit into the claim value, whether it was rounded up from a five or rounded down from a little over a six multiplier. That, that isn't known, but I'm guessing it was the former. So here we can look at uh, mining run two in that same area. This is about a day after the previous run. Different time, slightly a bit different time, and the hit rate goes way down. It's down to 20%. But uh, as you can see, all of the predicted values are less than the claim values because we can look at the difference, predicted difference. And there's one here, you know, that's, you know, like eight tenths of a pack. Uh, but that, that doesn't matter. It's still more value. The claim value is more. Now, if we go to run three, we got a 35% hit rate. And this was today, uh, shortly before I, uh, I recorded this, before I started making this particular video. And you can see this very interesting platinum hit. The reason I use this as an example is because it's much like the value right. I only get one platinum stone, and that one platinum stone is worth three PED. So it's the same concept as a value right. Because platinum is one of the, the second rarest resource in this particular area, you know, value right being the first, the, the stone only has you know, one value per unit. That's three ped. And so was the claim more, the value of the claim more, and it was rounded down? 
probably not. Uh, it's probably n not like uh, a multiplier of three plus a little bit of decay, which I'd get a few peck, and then I'd probably get Listerian. It was probably a, uh, a claim a uh, size smaller than when the decay was added on. It rounded into this this next category, which is the uh, the multiplier, what looks like a multiplier of three. So it was probably a multiplier of two, and then plus the decay, the percentage of the decay pushed it into a larger claim size or a larger claim value, rather. So the plan is to do the same series of mining runs with an amplifier and see how these two, these the two sets of data compare to each other, and then see if we can draw any conclusions and change our formula from there. Hopefully, we'll learn quite a bit about how the decay of an amplifier changes the type of resource and the claim value. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, Sturge, this is just loot theory business. There's a whole Planet, o Planet Calypso forum thread on based on loot theory. Well, as Pig Venice used to call it, theory craft and the only way you're going to create a theory is to first create a hypothesis that hypothesis has to be based on the data and that's all i'm doing is collecting the data and refining my hypothesis into something that we might one day use as a theory yeah it's theory craft it's hypothesis craft it's it's a fun way to approach a game that can be monotonous uh from time to time but we're using deductive reasoning and data to actually get to the root of how the claim events are generated and then the claim value and then we're going to try to apply that to a larger set of data that we are going to generate from this same mining run same finder with an amplifier in this area and we'll see how that larger set uh just increase in v claim value how that applies to this theory craft this hypothesis craft that we're doing and using the data to solve that particular problem is the decay finder decay going to be dwarfed by the larger values uh from generated from a finder amplifier or are we going to see some sort of corollary drawn as uh, sort of an increase from that as well. And I, I don't know what we'll find there, but it'll be interesting to see how that plays out in the next run. So that's probably enough fun for one episode. Uh, I, I think it's been uh, fun and interesting to figure out how this, uh, how this works out. I appreciate everybody watching. All the new subscribers, thank you very much for sticking around and being patient as the new, uh, the new world sort of changes with the, uh, with my work schedule and uh, possibility of not being not working again for six months in the future, but right now I am working, and so the videos will probably be coming out Monday, Tuesdays, as opposed to Saturdays. So there won't be a huge delay between videos moving forward. Thank you for all for watching. This is Sturge signing off. Ciao for now.